chocolate and peanut butter, great combination. I think I don't think there's anybody that doesn't like that combination. So this is going to be a chocolate peanut butter mousse cake. The cake will be a dark chocolate cake, and there will be a mousse filling in the center that's peanut butter mousse, and then we'll do some other fattening things to it. To start off, we want to start off with our springform pan. This is a nine inch springform pan, and what I did is I buttered it, and then I put a piece of parchment paper that I cut to fit the bottom. If you don't have parchment paper, you can use wax paper. And then I buttered the parchment paper, and then I floured it and, and dusted off the flour and the excess. And we'll put that aside. Now, we want to make, mix our dry ingredients first. So I have one cup of all-purpose flour, And to that, I'm going to add a pinch of salt. And then two thirds cup of dark cocoa powder. And use the best cocoa powder you can find. Not, uh, well, I hate to say not the store brand, but that usually is not the nice, but a nice dark chocolate. So two thirds cup. And just whisk that together. And we're going to set this aside while we do our wet ingredients. I have my mixer bowl over a pot of water. And I'm just letting the water simmer. I don't want it boiling. Um, you don't want it boiling because it'll just cook the eggs too fast. Now, what I have here are seven whole eggs. Putting them in my pot. And one cup of granulated sugar. It's sticking in there. Okay, and what I'm going to do is just whisk that up real quick. Now what we're trying to do here is not cook this mixture. We're just trying to warm it because then we're going to put it on our mixer and it's going to beat up a lot better if it's warm. Like baby bottle warm, you know, the kind that you put on your wrist. Here we go. And this is going to take probably... I don't know, three, four minutes, not very long. Because the eggs I have here, I have at room temperature, so it shouldn't be long at all. And you'll just feel it by touching it. And it feels nice and just lukewarm. It's time to take it off. That is just about right. Shut this off. Get our pan off. Get rid of our water. And because this is hot, I'm going to use mix. And get rid of that. It's nice to have a nice shelf below here. Now, I'm going to put this on the mixer. And I'm going to add just a touch of vanilla. Just a little bit. And I'm going to use the wire whisk. And we're going to beat this until it starts getting light in color and fluffy and it's going to look almost triple in volume. So that's going to take three, four, five minutes even, depends. how it's ribbony and it comes right off and kind of just makes a ribbon on the top there. And look at how much lighter in color that is than egg yolks. All right, let's get that all off there. Now, we're going to fold in our dry mixture. Now I'm going to sift it in there because there's sometimes little things in the flour or the flour gets lumpy and it depends upon the weather and you know how it is. extra down there that's stuck. And then just gonna sift it in there. I love cocoa, I love chocolate, but we 
working with cocoa, it's it's like working with powdered sugar. It's so light and fluffy, it gets everywhere and it just covers everything. It's coated in cocoa. All right. Now, if you can look, I don't know if you can see the stuff that's left in the bottom of the sieve, little lumpies. Those aren't bad. They're just clumped up because of humidity or whatever. So I'm just going to take this and run them through or push them through with your hand. It just breaks them up through the sieve. And that's why you use the sieve so you don't have lumps in there. You just have the good stuff. Okay. Now, the old folding method of just round and around and keep moving the bowl and gently incorporating that cocoa dry mixture into those fluffed up eggs. You don't want this to deflate. But get your get your spatula all the way down to the bottom because the cocoa kind of sinks. And if you don't do that, then you're going to have lumps on the bottom or dry spots of cocoa. And this does take a few minutes. Now, you can also see in front of me, I have some melted butter. Three tablespoons of melted butter. That goes in at the very end and it will deflate this somewhat. So that's why we want to take our care here in this step to deflate it as little as possible. Also, my oven is heating to 350 degrees. I've got my pan ready as you've seen. And this is a chocolate sponge cake. And you could make this oh, a week ahead of time wrap it really tightly and freeze it without cutting it in any way. Now I can see how I'm incorporating all this cocoa and how much it's already deflated this egg mixture so much, but that's okay. It hasn't deflated it all the way. So now I'm going to add the butter and get that going. Again, the butter will sink to the bottom, so you want to be careful that you're not going to have a pool of butter at the bottom. When I put this in that 350 degree oven, it's going to be in there anywhere from 30 to 35 minutes. Last time I made this, it was exactly 33 minutes, so that's right in between. That's a good marker. But again, your oven is different than mine. It may be faster, it may be slower. And if you have a convection oven, this is not the time to use the convection. Okay, now I'm going to put this in our pan. Get all that goodness out. It just smells like a very rich chocolate cake at this point, which is what it is. But it's a sponge cake. It's not as rich as other cakes. There's no butter in here, except for that little bit at the very end, but not like sticks and sticks of it. Give it a good tap. And into our 350 degree oven for 30 to 35 minutes. Here's our chocolate sponge cake. When it came out of the oven, what I did is I took the spring form pan, I released the side, and I just let it sit there, just released. Didn't try to take the cake out or anything. And then I gave it another five minutes, took the sides off, and then let the cake cool completely to room temperature, which it is now. And you can see there's a slight dome on top. So I want to get rid of that because I want my cake to be nice and flat. So I'm going to take my long knife. I love this long bread knife. It's really great for doing stuff like this. I'm going to cut down the dough. Not too much. I'm not going to get rid of all of it. I want some of that cake left. So I've got this little piece and that's ready for later. And now we're going to cut this in half and hopefully I'll do a good job. But you know what? Even if you don't do that great a job and it comes out a little bit like that, that's okay because you're going to have all this mousse in there and it's going to cover all that up. So here we go. Check out where I am. I'm doing okay. Like I said, you don't have to be an expert at this. I know I'm not. All right. 
right, now we have our two layers. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back with the pan. I've cleaned it all out, put the top down so that we have the cut side up. And I'm going to put this one aside for the moment. Now, I'm going to make the peanut butter mousse that goes inside of it. So, in our mixer bowl, we've got eight ounces of very soft cream cheese. One cup of creamy peanut butter. Sticky. Come on, get off there. And I have one quarter cup of regular sugar. And now I'm gonna blend these together on the mixer. And we want to get them nice and soft and fluffy. So you're going to beat it, not just to blend, but beat it beyond that until it gets a little bit of air into it. So, a couple minutes. All right, now partway through, I just want to get in there and scrape down the sides so I make sure that everything's getting blended in there. That's a lot softer than it was. Oh yeah, much softer. So, scrape down those sides, pull the peanut butter off. I can feel the lightness, it, because it got whipped up, it feels so much lighter than when you started. If you had just blended them together and didn't whip them like that for a few minutes, it would have been a lot heavier. So, we're gonna put this aside. And now, in our next bowl, with a wire whip, we're going to put a generous two-thirds cup of heavy whipping cream. After all, we are making a mousse, and mousse requires cream. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to whip this up until it's nice and thick. and then we're going to just blend them in. Now, it's going to take a few minutes because that peanut butter mixture is so much heavier than the cream. But just have some patience and take your time. Make sure you're getting rid of all that white cream so you can't see it. You don't want any big blobs of it in there. You can feel how much lighter the peanut butter mixture has become. It's still pretty heavy, but it's a lot lighter than it was. And that is almost done. See how nice, fluffy that is? Now we're going to put it on top of the cake in the pan. my offset spatula, which I love. You know, if you didn't want peanut butter cream, you could use chocolate cream in here. I mean, chocolate, you know, mousse. You could put vanilla mousse in here. You can put coffee mousse in here. You could put raspberry mousse in here. All of those flavors go great with chocolate. It's all up to you, but 
I know how much everybody loves peanut butter and chocolate. And now we take our other cake layer, put that back on top, give it a good squish down. Now, I'm going to cover this with plastic wrap and it has to be in the refrigerator for at least 30 minutes. I would say a couple of hours would be better. And then we're gonna take it out, show you how we can decorate it and serve it. All right, so here is our peanut butter mousse cake that's been sitting in the refrigerator, chilling down, and it's ready to be decorated. I'm going to cover it with a chocolate ganache. Now, ganache is a really cool thing because not only does it taste wonderful, but there are things you can do with it. Basic ganache, in its liquid form, makes a nice glaze. If you chill it down and whip it up, you make a whipped frosting. If you let it get really hard and roll it into balls, you can make truffles. So all in the same recipe, all in the same thing. So we're going to make a basic glaze right now, but we're also going to make a whipped decoration. In my container right here, my little pot, I have three quarters of a cup of heavy cream and three tablespoons of butter. And I have eight ounces of semi-sweet chocolate. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this to a boil, the butter and the cream. And when I bring it to a boil, I'm gonna pour it over the chocolate and that is going to melt it and make a nice glaze. And that's gonna take about a minute or two. All right, our cream and butter mixture has come to a boil. I'm gonna take it off the heat, pour it over the chocolate, and I'm gonna let it sit there for a minute or so. Just let it steep. And while I do that, I'm gonna get rid of my burner. That's off. Now, here is our cake. I'm gonna release the sides. There you have your mousse in the middle of your cake. I'm going to lift it up and put it onto this cake platter. And then I'm going to mix up the cream and the chocolate. Now, remember I told you that ganache has different forms that it can take. When it's fresh and warm like it is here, it becomes a glaze. If you let it cool down to room temperature and then beat it, because of the cream, you will make a fluffy frosting. I made some ganache earlier and it's cool to room temperature, it's cool, and we're gonna beat that up and that's gonna be our decorations. So here we go. Just finished. Mixing this up. I'm not going to use all of this ganache. I will put the rest of this that I don't use as a glaze into the refrigerator and during the week I can frost cupcakes, dip cookies, do a whole bunch of different things with this ganache. Okay. We're not trying to frost the sides. We're just trying to cover the top and maybe have a drizzle on the sides. Just be careful. I'm going to put that off to the side for the moment while we deal with this cooled down ganache. So we're going to put it, see how much thicker that is? almost fudgy. Put that in. Put this on the mixer. And beat it up until it becomes whipped. Let's 
check it and see how it is. See how much lighter it is. Nice. Okay. Now we're going to put it into the bag. Put a good whip around. My mouth is watery, smelling this. And then I have some peanuts here. These are honey roasted peanuts. You can use regular peanuts. You don't have to use peanuts. Do whatever you want to do. This is going to have to go into the refrigerator until everything sets. It's very soft right now. Why not? Put some more here. Put some peanuts on it. And after this has had time to set in the refrigerator, then we'll take it out and serve it up. So there's our peanut butter mousse cake.